What if a former president was immune to criminal prosecution? Sounds like a plot for a political thriller, right? But it's not. This is the question currently facing the Supreme Court of the United States. Now imagine the gravity of this situation. The Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, is set to decide on whether a former president, Donald Trump in this case, can claim immunity from prosecution. This isn't just a question about one man's fate, but a question that could redefine the boundaries of the presidency and the interpretation of the Constitution. Why is this so significant? Well, this case is about more than just the immunity claim of one individual. It's about the broader implications of such a precedent. It's about the balance of power and the rule of law. It's about the question of whether a former president can be prosecuted for actions taken during their tenure. The case in question involves multiple criminal charges, including conspiracy to defraud the United States and obstructing the certification of an electoral victory. The Supreme Court's decision could set a new precedent for presidential immunity and raise questions about the extent to which a former president can be held accountable for their actions while in office. The Supreme Court's decision will not only impact the future of Donald Trump, but it could also reshape the future of the presidency. If the court rules that a former president is immune from prosecution, it could potentially set a dangerous precedent. It could mean that future presidents might feel they can act with impunity, knowing they won't be held accountable once they leave office. But if the court rules the other way, it could send a strong message that no one is above the law, not even a former president. This could serve as a powerful reminder of the rule of law and the checks and balances that are so integral to our democracy. This case is not just about one man, but about the future of the presidency and the interpretation of the Constitution. To fully grasp the gravity of this case, we need to rewind to the 2020 election. The year was 2020, a year of uncertainty and change, and the United States was in the throes of a contentious presidential election. This was not just any election, but one that would mark a significant chapter in the annals of American history. The battle lines were drawn with President Donald Trump on one side and former Vice President Joe Biden on the other. As the nation watched with bated breath, allegations of election interference began to surface, casting a cloud of suspicion over the electoral process. These allegations did not just fade into the background after the ballots were cast and the results announced. Instead, they grew into a formidable legal battle that has led us to the present day. The central figure in this battle? None other than former President Trump himself. Trump, it appears, is not just facing allegations but charges of considerable weight. Among these are accusations of conspiracy to defraud the United States. But what does this mean? In essence, it is a claim that Trump, along with others, endeavored to cheat the American people out of a fair and free election. But the charges don't stop there. Trump is also accused of obstructing the certification of Biden's electoral victory. This refers to attempts to prevent the formal recognition of Biden's win, a crucial step in the peaceful transition of power. These charges, if proven, carry serious implications not just for Trump, but for the very fabric of American democracy. They raise questions about the sanctity of the electoral process, the power of the presidency, and the rule of law. The 2020 election was a divisive moment in American history, but it was just the beginning of a legal saga that continues to unfold today. Fast forward to today, where the battle has moved from the political arena to the courtroom. In the center of this legal whirlwind is former President Donald Trump, who has claimed immunity from prosecution for charges related to alleged interference in the 2020 election. His lawyers argue that, as a sitting president at the time of the alleged actions, he is immune from prosecution. They contend that this shield of immunity extends even after a president has left office, protecting them from legal repercussions for actions taken during their tenure. On the other side of the aisle, the prosecution vehemently disagrees. They argue that no one, not even a former president, is above the law. They contend that immunity does not cover actions that are deemed illegal, regardless of when they were committed. The prosecution believes that allowing such a broad interpretation of immunity would set a dangerous precedent, 
essentially giving carte blanche to any president to act without fear of legal consequences. The battlefield for this monumental legal contest, the Supreme Court of the United States. They've agreed to hear Trump's immunity claim, stepping in after a lower court rejected the argument. This isn't just about one man's legal woes. The decision could fundamentally alter the interpretation of presidential immunity with repercussions that go far beyond Trump's individual case. What makes this case even more intriguing is the timing. Trump's lawyers are seeking to delay the trial until after the presidential election, where he's a front runner for the Republican nomination. Should the Supreme Court rule in his favor, it could potentially shield him from prosecution during the critical election period. Whether you're a fan of Trump or not, the outcome of this case will have far-reaching implications for the presidency and the rule of law. So, what happens next? What does this mean for America's future? These are the questions on everyone's mind as we wait for the Supreme Court to deliver its verdict on former President Trump's immunity claim. The implications of this decision, whichever way it swings, will reverberate far beyond this single case. Let's start with the possibility of a ruling in favor of Trump's claim. Should the Supreme Court uphold the notion of presidential immunity, it would set a precedent that could potentially shield future presidents from prosecution for actions taken during their tenure. This could fundamentally shift the balance of power in the United States, giving the highest office in the land an added layer of invincibility and raising concerns about accountability at the topmost level of governance. On the other hand, if the court rules against Trump's claim, it could open the floodgates for litigation against former presidents. This would certainly foster a climate of increased accountability, but it might also have the unintended consequence of opening up the presidency to a degree of scrutiny and potential legal persecution that could dissuade capable candidates from seeking office. Moreover, the decision's implications extend beyond the presidency. The Supreme Court's ruling could shape public perception of the judicial system itself. A verdict in favor of Trump's claim might cast the judiciary in a light of favoritism, undermining public faith in its impartiality. Conversely, a ruling against the claim could be seen as the court's willingness to hold even the highest office in the land accountable, bolstering its image as a guardian of justice. Finally, this case could have a profound impact on the political landscape. It might affect the outcome of the upcoming presidential election, particularly if Trump, as the front-runner for the Republican nomination, is allowed to delay his trial until after the election. No matter the outcome, this case will undoubtedly leave its mark on American history. Its implications will be felt for years, possibly decades to come. The Supreme Court's decision will not only determine the fate of one man, but could also shape the course of American democracy itself. Before we wrap up, let's quickly recap the key points we've covered. We began with the Supreme Court's decision to hear former President Donald Trump's claim of immunity from prosecution for charges related to the 2020 election. This decision is a major development as it has the potential to set a precedent for presidential immunity. As we discussed, the Supreme Court will be reviewing a lower court's rejection of Trump's immunity claim and we can expect their ruling by the end of June. Next, we delved into the events of the 2020 election. It was an intense time marked by controversy and legal battles, with Trump at the center of many of the disputes. The charges Trump faces, including conspiracy to defraud the U.S. and obstructing the certification of Biden's electoral victory, are directly tied to these events. Then, we explored Trump's claim of immunity in more detail. Trump's lawyers are seeking to delay the trial until after the presidential election, where he is a front-runner for the Republican nomination. This claim of immunity raises significant questions about the extent to which a former president can be prosecuted for actions taken during their tenure. Finally, we discussed the potential implications of the Supreme Court's decision. This case could potentially redefine the presidency and the rule of law in America. If the Supreme Court sides with Trump, it could set a precedent that grants former presidents broad immunity from prosecution. On the other hand, if they reject Trump's claim, it could affirm that no one, not even a former president, is above the law. 
This is a case that has the potential to redefine the presidency and the rule of law in America. Stay tuned as we continue to follow this historical event.